Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Shalom, I'm David Mensah, Israeli government spokesman. A quick update from me and then to your questions, which you should put in the chat, all of which we'll answer uh, on this uh, Wednesday, the 7th of August, day 306 of the October 7th war. October the 7th today, which means it's 10 months to the day, 115 hostages still in Hamas captivity. They need to be released uh, now. Our other war aims remain unchanged, the destruction of Hamas's military and governing capabilities, and to ensure, of course, that Gaza will never form a threat to this country again. All that remains unchanged on this 10-month anniversary. Last night, the IDF released that the last missing person, Bilha Yinon, was uh, murdered on October the 7th. This is a result of extensive and investi an in ex extensive investigation effort with evidence discovered in the area of Yinon's home. Complex testing enabled the verification of her identity. She was murdered on October 7th. The country sends its heartfelt condolences to Yinon's family and to the entire community of Netiv HaSara, where she was killed. May her memory be a blessing. Next, I want to give you some details, the latest details we have uh, about the north of Israel. Uh, so here is the latest information, facts and figures we have for the situation in the north of Israel. Some of you have been reaching out to me personally, which you're always free to do together with uh, members of our team, hear about the latest details. So I wanted to share with you some of them here today. So between October the 9th, October uh, 2023, and August the 6th, so that's yesterday, uh, the Iranian terror army, uh, terror army proxy Hezbollah has launched more than 7,500 rockets towards Israel. 7,500 rockets have been fired towards Israel, but only 6,500 have actually reached Israeli territory. So that means that 1,000 rockets have either misfired or landed back in Lebanon and Syria, killing ordinary Lebanese and Syrians. That is a crime against humanity and another reason why Hezbollah needs to be kicked out of Lebanon to protect these Lebanese people, uh, never mind Israel. They're a menace to Lebanon. Since the beginning of this war, Hezbollah has also launched 187 drones into Israel. Here are the casualty figures uh, as a result of Hezbollah's aggression. 43 people have been killed since October the uh, 8th. 43 in our north, 43 people uh, have been killed. 23 civilians, including an Indian national, including eight children aged 7 to 13 and four children aged 14 to 18 and 19 members of, of our security forces have been killed. 258 people have been wounded. That's 119 civilians and 139 members of our security services. As of yesterday, there are 62,224 internally displaced persons from our northern communities because of the war. Of those 62,000, 15,728 of these displaced people are minors, children, just think of the disruption to their education. In total, Israel, in total, uh, 98 villages, cities and towns in the north and the Gaza area have been evacuated. The total number of evacuees in the entire country amounts to 140,000 Israelis, of which 80,000 are working are of working age. All of these people need to be returned to their homes. This is not a sustainable reality. So on this 10-month anniversary since we were attacked, let me give you some additional figures. More than 1,200 of our people were 
massacred on October the 7th. 860 civilians were murdered. 53 were children. Going back to the north, there have been 769 fires from rocket and UAV hits. Uh, 138,000 acres of land have been burnt. I'll be happy to share those figures with you again if you uh, get in touch. Next to COGAT and an update from their work coordinating aid into Gaza. Over the last two weeks, we've seen an increase in the amount of UN aid truck collection from the Gazan side of Kerem Shalom. While the private sector and other NGOs have been collecting aid regularly, uh, the UN aid agencies have only recently resumed doing so just lately, after a very long pause. So from over 1,300 trucks worth of aid waiting to be collected four weeks ago, there are now approximately 640 trucks worth of aid on the Gazan side of Kerem Shalom. About 440 of them are UN aid. Yesterday, 158 trucks worth of aid carrying humanitarian, uh, carrying humanitarian goods were sent into Gaza. Trucks entered via the Kerem Shalom and Erez crossings. We repeatedly urge aid agencies to increase their logistical capabilities and collect the aid. Finally, in the last 24 hours, Hamas fired from fired rockets from launches embedded next to next to humanitarian aid warehouses in southern Gaza. These humanitarian aid warehouses are run by international organizations, including UNRWA, and are used to distribute humanitarian aid to the civilian population in Gaza. Hamas continues to systematically abuse civilian and humanitarian infrastructure to carry out terror attacks against Israeli civilians. We know why, of course, they fire from these humanitarian areas. They wish to uh, encourage return fire and then uh, cry to the world's media that uh, we've targeted, which of course we do not, uh, civilian areas. That's the purpose of their action. They're trying to maximize civilian casualties. Uh, Hania himself uh, used to say this regularly. That was his uh, ambition to kill as many of Gazan civilians to uh, encourage um, a criticism of the State of Israel. So that's the end of our briefing today. I will now take your questions, which you should put in the chat together with your news outlet. Uh, first question here I can see uh, from um, uh, Joel Pollock at Breitbart News. Uh, firstly, CNN reported what it is calling a shocking video of 89 bodies being delivered uh, to Gaza from Israel. Uh, can you explain uh, what happened there and why? Uh, thank you for that question, Joel. Uh, I, I haven't seen that report. Uh, your question is the first I've seen in it uh, of it, so I would encourage you to, to contact the IDF for further comment. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, next, uh, the uh, White House sources are telling the media that their diplomatic pressure is working to stop Iran from launching an attack. Can you comment uh, on that? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Joel. Let me uh, just say that the Prime Minister has made clear uh, today uh, that this uh, Iranian uh, axis of evil, uh, it's formed a stranglehold against Israel. It's a ring of armed uh, terror armies. Israel is ready both defensively and offensively to defend ourselves. We will, of course, our long arm will, anyone that tries to harm this country, our long arm will reach them and they in turn will be harmed. So whether it's Hezbollah in Lebanon, Hamas in Gaza, the Houthis uh, in Yemen and other militias, Israel will exact a very heavy price for aggressions against us, together with uh, our allies from any arena. Our long arm, as the Prime Minister said, will reach anyone who causes harm to our civilians. We've made uh, very steady efforts with the elimination of 
commanders of the military wing of both Hamas and Hezbollah, and we've sent a very clear message to anyone that threatens this country. Um, thank you. Next question from Hannah Julian from the Jewish Press. Um, just uh, scroll, uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, Hannah Julian from the Jewish Press. Uh, your first question is, uh, US officials say Iran may be reconsidering its plan for a massive attack on Israel. Does the Israeli government have the same uh, view? Thank you, uh, Hannah. I think that's the uh, pretty much the same question which um, uh, Joel asked in the previous question, and uh, I think I've given you uh, a good answer as to Israel's position. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, visiting the Tel HaShomer um, induction uh, of the new uh, IDF recruits uh, said this morning that Israel will reach anyone uh, both within a defensive capacity and an offensive capacity, anyone that seeks to harm uh, this nation. We are ready and we are strong. We are aware of the dangers, but we are strong and we are ready. Uh, next uh, question from Hannah Julian. If um, yeah, your hypothetical question, uh, which I'll read out, is if Iran does attack Israel as it vowed to do, will Israel directly attack Iran? And if so, will the targets uh, include nuclear facilities? Uh, thank you for that question, Hannah. Uh, you won't be surprised if I don't share our uh, military strategy here uh, from this podium. But needless to say, uh, this country is able to defend itself uh, and, of course, um, both in ways which our enemies have seen, but also in ways uh, they have not seen. And we are well aware of all Iranian capabilities. We've shown that uh, many times before. Uh, we know how to deal with this Iranian menace. They seek to stranglehold this country, but together with our allies, um, and this is very, very important, together with our allies, we are able to stand up to them. The United States um, is standing with us, uh, which we are extremely grateful, but also others in the international community, some of the whom will be happy to talk about it publicly and some of whom uh, are not. Uh, but either way, uh, they understand that this Iranian menace must be curbed and the dangerous ambitions of Iran, uh, and they state their amb ambitions very, very uh, clearly to destroy this country. Uh, they threaten both regional stability and the free world, and we will stand up to them. Uh, if you could just scroll down. Um, if you could just scroll down. Okay. If you could just... Right. Uh, next question from, from Jim Williams at uh, Zenger International News. Um, good afternoon, David. Yesterday you stated that the United Nations dismissed nine UNRWA uh, workers following an investigation that confirmed Israel's allegation of their involvement in assisting Hamas, not only during the October 7th attack, but also uh, continuing to, uh, to the present uh, to the present day. But if these nine individuals were terminated for aiding a terrorist organization, it raises the question of why they were not surrendered to the international court to face uh, possible charges of war crimes. Do you know if Israel is seeking the names uh, of these aid workers to bring them to justice? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Jim. Yes, indeed. Uh, yesterday I shared with you uh, that information uh, buried in an anonymous, anonymous looking uh, press release um, uh, about the uh, finally confirming what we have been saying uh, from the very start of this war and even before it that um, UNRWA is a front for Hamas. Uh, there are these nine individuals. We know their names, uh, Jim. We know who they are. We've provided this information uh, to UNRWA, to the Secretary General of the United Nations. Uh, also, we've uh, gleaned a lot of evidence from millions of documents we've taken from enemy hands uh, in Gaza. We're going through all of those millions of documents uh, as we speak. We know that UNRWA is a front for Hamas. Uh, we know the level of cooperation between the two organizations. Um, uh, and we are uh, have made very, very clear our opinions. Uh, yes, of course, there needs to be a an efficient uh, mechanism to support uh, ordinary Gazans to give them a better life. Uh, but UNRWA is not the answer. UNRWA is the problem. It perpetuates this issue. It works 
Uh, it is completely infiltrated uh, by Hamas. Uh, Sinwar uh, knows that, uh, uses it regularly. Uh, Hamas fighters know that. They hide in uh, UNRWA schools amongst uh, civilians. Uh, we know that their um, schools, the UNRWA schools network has been, uh, there are many tunnel entrances. The actual uh, UNRWA um, uh, headquarters sat right above uh, a Hamas uh, server farm. So the areas of cooperation between these two organizations are extremely uh, well known. Um, next question uh, uh, from uh, Dr. Abby Korb. Uh, uh, David, could you please send those stats to us in the group? Yes, uh, I will do that. Uh, the latest stats I have from the uh, war uh, and how it has affected our northern communities. I'll do that after this uh, briefing. Um, but also we'll send you the tape so you can uh, pull them off from there, but I will send you the figures as well. Uh, next question from David Clement uh, of um, the uh, News Forum. Does the Prime Minister's Office have comment regarding Turkey adding itself to South Africa's genocide uh, case? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, David uh, Clement from the News uh, Forum. Um, Look, I haven't seen those reports, David, so I don't want to uh, reply to them directly. We have, of course, seen some very aggressive comments uh, from uh, Turkey, from the president uh, and from the leadership of Turkey. Um, uh, very aggressive comments. Uh, you know, uh, we take them extremely seriously. This is a country that does not ignore uh, when world leaders uh, wish to harm our people. Uh, we do not ignore it at all. Uh, we regret these comments, um, but I won't uh, discuss that any uh, further uh, from this podium. Um, next question is from uh, Mr. Rubin at BIM Group. Uh, since 1,000 missiles fired by Hezbollah did not reach the territory of Israel and fell in Lebanon, could we say that the Creator uh, is protecting the people of Israel, and these are our miracles. Should we feel gratitude uh, despite the hardship? Regards um, from Mr. Rubin. Uh, thank you for that question, um, Mr. Rubin. Uh, yes, of course, uh, we should uh, be thankful, be thankful that we have a state of Israel uh, that is a homeland for the Jewish people, uh, that is a refuge for Jewish people that was created uh, despite our 3,000-year our history, just 76 years ago, um, this country was recreated as a homeland, as a refuge for this country to, uh, as, uh, to be able to, um, to live as a free people, free from the ravages of anti-Semitism and Jew hatred which has plagued uh, our people uh, for centuries. So yes, of course, we should be grateful uh, that God has given us this land. We should be grateful for the uh, for the, our success uh, of our soldiers uh, and uh, we should have also be grateful for the success of what all the country, all the uh, success which this country has bestowed uh, on the world, uh, the, all the innovations, uh, the tech innovations, the um, uh, agricultural uh, innovations, uh, the medical innovations this country has shared uh, with the world. Uh, you know, there's more startups in this country than uh, than uh, per capita than from any other uh, than any other country in the entire world we have shared many life-saving technologies so there is much to be grateful for uh, and we do of course um, are thankful uh, to the good Lord for um, for uh, for everything which uh, for all the accomplishments of this country and for our armed forces um, okay, any other questions? No? Uh, okay, Dr. Abby Corb. Okay, could you just scroll up for a second? Um, okay, I think I have dealt with all of your questions. I'll share um, those uh, comments, these uh, latest figures we have uh, in our group. Um, in the meantime, uh, the next briefing will be tomorrow. Uh, please do stay safe. And in the meantime, uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye now.